We give a lot of fucks about not giving a fuck, if that makes sense. This is Ben from the Dillinger Escape Plan. This is Dikembe Mutombo from the Dillinger Escape Plan. And we are the Dillinger Escape Plan from the Dillinger Escape Plan. You'll be listening to questions and answers today provided to you by the Dillinger Escape Plan. Very early on, um, not having any inclination that anyone would give a fuck, um, create a scenario where our product was not giving a fuck. It was a pretty liberating scenario to be in. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> when all of a sudden you look up and somebody actually cares, and actually wants to hear your music and is coming to your shows, you're like, oh wait, somehow this kind of worked out. So then you realize, hopefully, as we did, that you know our, our goal in the beginning should con continuously be to you know, create music that is self-stimulating and that we feel is polarizing because that's what, uh, that means you're doing something worthwhile. We give a lot of fucks about not giving a fuck, that makes sense. Yeah, we have a really high level of quality control about not putting parameters and cages around ourselves creatively. Yeah, that's kind of been the only motivation we've ever had is does this excite us, does this stimulate us, does this seem like a road that we're excited about driving down and then if it, the answer is yes, then we do it. Yeah, we feel very lucky to be in a creative position where very early on people expected us to be un unpredictable from every you know, aspect of the band, yeah. live, mu musically, all that stuff. So uh, some people would consider being a band like us kind of restrictive because like the ability right. to have massive, you know, mark appeal like um, to large audiences or radio player, a lot of stuff is, is not really a lot like pretty. <laughs> yeah, I see like a lot of things that other people might consider to be successful as like a cage. Hmm. You know, like if you're in a giant band, but that giant band is giant because you're synonymous with this one thing, you're in a cage and like right. it's a giant cage, but and there was a lot of people in that cage with you, but you're still on a track that you can't really get off of without losing all those people. And the fact that we've made it, managed to make a living at being completely creatively free is the best feeling uh, to be able to just do whatever we want and know that that's kind of become expected of us is, is the ultimate um, success as far as, you know, artistically, I feel. I don't think we've hit a creative wall in any way, shape, or no. form, or a performance wall or like anything like that. However, we do realize the need for to have a certain kind of life in order to produce this kind of music. Doing it as long as we've done it and starting to get to the point where you realize there's a cycle that doesn't change that much. You're in danger of uh, kind of like having a um, conscious um, idea of what's supposed to, your life's supposed to look like in order to be able to create this stuff. And that's a, a dangerous position to be in creatively. So while I, I don't think any of us would be bored making Dillinger music, I'm starting to realize that the grind is becoming very monotonous as we get older and not um, seeing much difference between those kind of lifestyle periods between making albums and playing just the shows, I think is, is what's creating a scenario where we feel like we need to change our lives in order to remain um, to in order to continue to make important music, whether it's, you know, whatever style of music that is. So that's the kind of the discussion Greg and I had where it's like, you know, we could just do this album and do the tour and then see what's next and decide if we want to do more later or whatever, but it's boring. And if it gets boring, there's no point. So while this is extremely um, unpredictable, our future is unpredictable, it's scary, our financial future is unknown, all these things, it's exciting. <laughs> Int intent is what illuminates right. action. You know, action without intent is, is means nothing. To do this and to make this decision gives our band more intent. Like it gives our album right. more intent. It it encapsulates the band in a way where you can present the band to people as a uh, as a piece of art or a body mm -hmm. of work instead of just being like a, a, a series, a mini series that never never ends. You could say, oh, we had a deliberate beginning, we had a deliberate end. The beginning was a conscious thought that Ben manifested and chose to create this band, and the end was a choice. And that's a way stronger artistic move than just letting something go until you run out of gas, or your fans stop caring, or you run out of creative ideas, or you just fizzle out. That doesn't appeal, I think, to either of us at all. And I don't think either of us are scared of being 
nothing without this. Like Greg said, the difference between art um, and craft is intent. And we don't want to be someone who's just churning out Dillinger riffs. Yeah, then you're just good at being Dillinger. Well, that, and that's, that's, it. That, that's craft. Like we know how to, and we know we know how to make a Dillinger album. But we want to make sure that the, the intent behind it continues to be, um, you know, purposeful right. and, and real and honest because really all we've ever done is try to sell honesty. That's it. You know, if we can't do that, there's no purpose in like, playing this kind of music. And the reality of like, you know, doing the band at this level at 55 years old is probably not realistic. I mean, doing it differently, doing, you know, having, being relevant, artistically relevant, all those things being unpredictable, those are all very realistic. But um, of course, physically and all these things, even just someone who's screaming, you know, 30 days in a row, like that's not normal. And we've been doing it for years and years and years and years. And so, um, like, uh, yeah, I think, you know, while we're not ending this because of those reasons, the reality is people are like, well, you'll come back in 10 years when the money's right. I'm like, I mean, I'm gonna be an old man. And t let's be real, you know what I mean? Probably not. Probably not gonna be coming back in 10, 12 years and doing what we do and the way we do it. Could it happen? It could happen. We're never saying it would never happen. I just always wanted Dillinger to be looked at as an entity, not like this chronological thing. People say, what was your favorite record? What was your favorite time of the band? I'm like, I can't tell you because I feel every single part of this band is relevant. I can listen to it in any order. And while it represents different times in our lives and different things and different with some different band members and different circumstances, I feel like it's a piece of work. all the Dillinger catalog and history and everything that we've gone through is a piece of work in itself. It's not some chronological thing that just keeps being built and added onto. So it's very important that we make this definitive ending and that people can say, this is what Dillinger Escape Plan is, this thing. This thing right here, you can take it, it's right here, it's just part of time, this is what it was. I don't want us to ever be in a situation where we're like, Dillinger Escape Plan were awesome. I think they just made a new record. Right, it they? still exists, but like, it doesn't I, matter I, anymore. You yeah, don't listen like, to the but new like, stuff. I remember when I was a kid, yeah. like, when seeing that band, I wanted it to be, like, encapsulated as this thing, you know? And so um, the only way to do that is to, to, to as Greg said, you know, intentionally um, close close the door and, and, you know, create the final chapter. I mean, I still feel like we're, we're uh, at the top of the game of, of what we do. Um, I don't really see any young bands that are out there uh, doing the same thing as us or pushing things in the same way that, that we continue to do. That's not saying there's not a lot of young artists that I don't think are great. I just think that we, to say that like, oh, there's a band out there that we're going to pass the torch to, like that's like, I think if there was a band that we could pass the torch to, that would be, that would be impossible to me. Like I feel like that. I mean, the, goal, the point is, is not to pass the torch to anyone. The point is for every band to create their, yes. their own existence. Yeah, That's I think a, fierce individualism. Can be inspire, you know, that can inspire, but. Is the important thing, is to be fiercely individualistic. And if that band is around, that band's not gonna sound anything like us, they're not gonna act anything like us. So for, when someone says to me, oh, have you seen this band, they're crazy, and they play these crazy stuff, and the singer is crazy, and they, I'm like, I don't even want to see it. It doesn't make any, who cares? And influence is a, is a compliment, and mimicry is an insult, so I don't. I don't, I don't know of anyone that we would be passing a torch to. Yeah, I think if somebody was kind of, kind of like, move, follow on in our footsteps, it would be a band or an artist or a painter or a writer that d doesn't sound like anything like us or anything, right. but took the spirit of what we do as we did with bands like Black Flag and and the Bad Brains. And yeah, I also um, think it'll take yeah. a little while for things to become things would have to become a lot more conservative again for someone to be able to come out and then break them open because it needs some time needs to pass between the last group of people that did something and the next group of people that's influenced by them so that they're not just constantly being given a direct comparison. I would like to be played by a, it has to be someone young an yeah. unknown upstart. Yes, a young upstart. You know, I want to be the guy who will end up being Harrison Ford. So you yeah. should be Probably, Not probably Johnny Depp in Nightmare on Elm Street, like that kind of thing. Like the guy who would be Johnny Depp in Nightmare on Elm Street. Right. Yeah, or that equivalent. And I, I would take maybe the, the, the equivalent of the Brad Pitt film and Louise guy. Right. And then we would just be, you know. And then, and then we would be the guys <laughs> who are played by the next biggest, hottest yes. things. And then people will watch our life and story. And a lot just more people would watch want, it. Right? Yeah, and then we'd sell more back catalog. And then him and I could and actually afford Starbucks. And then they'd see us in public and they'd be like, they don't look anything like those guys. Yeah, like, right. but then they'd be like, wow, we just, they just sold a whole bunch of 
Dillinger Escape Plan movies based on these guys becoming these massive and being in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes. And then our two cent royalty, we could actually not worry about getting extra guacamole on yes. our sandwich. We could just say whatever. Get the extra guac. Get the guac. Whatever. Sure. Call Usher. Go for it. Brad Pitt. <laughs> Johnny Depp. <laughs>